Hello, this is Ethan from Dark Zebra, and today uh, we we're going to talk a little bit about Fig. Fig is a tool, a utility that's very handy in creating Docker services. Uh, a week and a half ago or so, we built a, a layered application using multiple Docker containers uh, for WordPress, and we had a Docker container which stored our files, a Docker container which had the database, and a Docker container that had WordPress and Apache running. Now what if uh, what Fig does is allows us to automate that process. We simply create a Fig file, fig.yml, which defines our layers, what they are, what volumes, what links, what um, ports are available on them and it will automatically start up our docker container so we are going to redo what we did last week with uh, with a fig file and you can see here I have a fig.yml I have a docker file which I'm not going to use right now but we'll get to that at the end of the presentation first things first if you remember we needed to set up uh, a container which was a data store and in our case we just used busybox and the way that this fig.yml file um, runs is that it is a yml file meaning it's indented two spaces so it's, it's like xml it's a markup language but everything's indented and it's pretty strict in in that so you need to make sure that you um, follow the proper formatting for yml you can't use normal tabs um, so, uh, in our case, what you do here is you set up some top level, um, each of these top levels inside of the YML file is a container that gets started by this fig process. So in our case, we want to have a web server, we want to have a DB server, and then we want to have a file store. So you can just name them web, DB, and file like this. We're not going to worry about web and DB right now. So we'll just leave file in. We have the image that it's based upon, which is BusyBox, a command you want to run. In our case, you want to echo data store and then leave. And then there's a volumes uh, attribute here that we can use, and which is an array, and that's where this dash comes in. You indent it and you use a dash to say this is an item in the array. We're going to use two volumes. One is var wwhtml, which is needed by WordPress to store the WordPress files, and var lib mysql, which is used by the database to store its files. And if we save this and go to our command line here, fig has, uh, it's, it's not too complicated. It represents pretty closely what Docker has. Uh, right now we're going to be worrying about the up command which is creating and starting a container and the up command will use our YML file to build um, our data store and you can see uh, it had an output of data store because we had an echo data store it exited and that was it and if we go docker ps we don't have anything running but docker ps a we see that we have our uh, data store so that's how we created the first level of our uh, service application here. Now you remember we needed to have a database as well, and so I've already got this written. I'm just going to uncomment it. And what we do here is very similar. This one is called DB, top level. It's our another layer here. Uh, we're using the MySQL image, and if you remember, we had to pass an environmental variable to the MySQL image telling what our MySQL root password would be. So we have an attribute here or a sub um, item in our fig file called environment. And inside of this, I can just go name colon value as long as I want indented two spaces from environment and set up all my environmental variables rather than needing to pass, pass them as a very long string inside of the inside of our run command. And then of course we need to use the volumes from our data store which we named file so we have a volumes underscore from colon and because it's an array we're going to hit enter indent two spaces passing the dash 
and we're going to pass in the name which matches the name over below it of file. If I name this something like my data store, I would need to make sure that it was my data store in volumes from. And we're going to save this. And now when we run fig up, it is going to set up our database as well. And that will take just a minute as it sets up MySQL into the volume. And because MySQL is going to be running as a, a process, it's not going to just die. Uh, so it's going to keep running here. If I go into another terminal, I can say uh, fig stop, and that is going to stop the application I'm running right now. And you'll see that it exited over here. I could also hit control C to force it to stop, but probably better just to go fig stop. So now what we have done is, and actually I am going to go fig start to restart this container. And we're going to go docker, type in docker ps. And you'll see that we now have a container running, which is MySQL. And it's named, uh, and, and when right now fig names it, it's naming it WP fig, which I assume is from the directory I'm in the name of the top level uh, key in the fig yml file which is db and then it gives it a number so once again we're going to stop this and the third thing that we want to do is our web image and that is so we add in a top level key of web we indent two spaces. We name it our. We have our image named WordPress because we're using the WordPress Docker image. And if you remember, we need to do a couple things. We are using the MySQL database, and that is only exposing a port. So we need to make sure and link to it so that we have the port available within our WordPress container. So we have a links key, and it's an array. So we pass in a uh, two spaces and a dash and in our case we pass in a string this first line here db colon is going to match this key down here for our database uh, environment uh, our database container um, the key one thing to remember with these keys in a fig file is i believe they can only have a through z and zero through nine right now they don't support underscores so back up here we have db colon and then we have to have an internal name so that the internal process can look for the appropriate uh, IP that it needs to connect to in the appropriate ports and WordPress wants it named MySQL. So we have db colon MySQL which is external name to internal name. Uh, we set up a port uh, just to say we want port 80 to be mapped to another port on our system. We could pass in something like 8080 colon 80, just like we do in Docker Run, which would map port 8080 to, of the host machine to port 80 on the container. Right now, we're just going to leave it at port 80 to cover something else later. Once again, we have an environment key, and it's just key colon value, and we need to make sure that the password matches the root password down here. And then we're going to do another volumes from and because this time and we did not do this in our previous video but this time we made the busy box have two volumes one for the wordpress files and so inside of our web container we have a volume from pointing to the file container layer and that's really it pretty simple if i now go fig up i think it's back on this other window it is going to uh, set up our file in our database and it's also going to uh, copy all the files into the WordPress uh, folder which is var www slash html and if we go into our other window and say docker ps we will now have two processes running one for MySQL and one for Apache which is our uh, WordPress site and we look at ports we can see that 
port 49153 was mapped to port 80 on the container and so we can open this up in our browser and we will be brought to the WordPress installation page. In another video I'll go over how to set up WordPress better in this but for now we're going to leave it at this that we just have a WordPress installation and that was much simpler than us creating and running containers manually and we can just use the fig command to find them in a file and have it automatically set up for us. We're going to go ahead and stop this and uh, one thing that I, I keep forgetting to do here is you can pass in a if you run the up command it will recreate the images um, again but if you already have the images like we have them now uh, docker ps-a we see we have three containers I can just type in fig start and that will restart them and, and you'll notice it put them in detached mode, which means they're in the background. And also go fix stop again. Now, if I pass in, I can also still do fig up and do a dash D, which puts it in detached mode. Now it's going to start them up, recreate them. So it's going to recreate them, then start them, and then it's going to exit. And they're running in the background. And of course, there's a fig PS command as well to see which processes it has and which ports are exposed. We're going to go ahead and stop these right now. And I want to cover something called the build. If we go back into our fig.yml file, you'll notice I have an image key here which tells me which image to use. So first of all, that can be either a local image or it can be a remote image. So you don't need to worry of whether or not you've already pulled it down. Fig will take care of that and will pull down any uh, images from the Docker registry that you don't have locally. But you can also tell Docker if you don't want to use an image to use to build a specific build file. Uh, and you would point it to the directory that has a docker file in it. In our case, I have already created this docker file, uh, which is just, I'm saying from busybox, I'm defining two volumes and I'm putting my command in there. That way I don't have to do it over here in the fig file. So I can take all of this out and just put the build colon and then space dot, which says build the local whatever doc files in the local directory and that will get put in as our file container so I can type in fig up here I'm gonna do dash G to put it in detached mode and it's actually going to create an image called WP fig underscore file if we go docker image now docker images you'll see that I have a local repository image called WP underscore fig file. And that is going to be based on BusyBox. That's just a, an easier way to perhaps set up something if you have to do some more complicated things and need to use a Docker file. So fig can run an image, but it can also build and run a Docker file for you. One last thing which I think is, is very cool is you'll notice right now I have a, a file store, a DB, and a web, and they all have a one with them. In, in FIG, I can scale up. If I need to have two web servers running uh, because perhaps I'm getting more traffic and I have a load balancer in front of them, I can say FIG scale grab the name that we had in our fig file which is web and say web equals two and you'll notice that it started up another container with the exact same image so if I now look at the fig processes I have two fig web servers two uh, 
two patch your web servers running one's on port 49153 and one's on 49154 so if i open this up i can refresh this page and you'll see it's still there but i can pass in another the same address with the, the second port the 49154 and i will also get the wordpress installation page once I've actually installed WordPress, it will give me the WordPress page itself. What this allows you to do is scale up. Uh, if you're suddenly going to get a whole bunch of traffic, you can scale up more containers to handle that traffic and you can scale them down as needed. And so the way we'd scale down is just set it back to one fig scale web equals one. And it's going to stop and remove that second web file. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching this Dark Zebra presentation. Please rate this video and add it to your favorites if you liked it. For additional content, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit us at darkzebra.com.